Hello audience. In this video, as you probably already figured out, I'm going to start working on the wood frame for this body. Now this is where we start the transition from metal fabrication to coach building. Now up to now, all I've been doing is metal fabrication. I've been making individual panels that may look impressive and were made with the best intentions of fitting, but we really have no idea if they're all going to work together. Now coach building is taking all this stuff and making it all work together in harmony as a car body and making it all work on top of an existing chassis. It has its own set of rules, its own problems, and its own set of remedies. It's pretty much a completely different way of thinking, but there is a lot of overlap between that and metal fabrication, so if you're building your own car bodies, it's important to understand both. Now my first plan was to build a temporary frame that I could build the body on top of and then put it on the chassis after it was finished. The problem with that is it would be immobile while I was working on it, which would be several months, so it would have to have a storage space, preferably out of the weather and out of the way of everything. And I've been waiting months to put aside a space for that, and if it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to. So. I went to plan B, which was to just take the body off this thing and start building the new body on top of the chassis. Now I didn't want to do this at first because while I'm working on the body I can't drive the car, but I really shouldn't be driving it anyway because the tires are all dry rotted, one of them's about to explode and the brakes don't work. Now making the wood frame for this has been a really slow process, reason being we got to get all the dimensions right, so this is really testing the knowledge I have and the information I have to see how much of it is any good and how much of it I really need. So pretty much what happens is I spend an entire day thinking and studying and looking at pictures and mocking stuff up. Then I spend about an hour making a wood piece only to find out I did it wrong and then I have to decide if I want to start over or re-dimension it somehow or just leave it alone. So, this has been a very boring, yet at the same time a very exciting part of the project. Anyway, let's get started. Well, that's about as far apart as I'm going to get it. Next, we start building up. But first, I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with all this stuff. This is the wood frame I already made for the left front part of the body. Now, I started with the left front section, pretty obviously because I already have an original panel for this, so I made it to fit the dimensions of that and made a few mistakes along the way. There's a few shims in this and there's a few parts that need to be replaced, but 
I'll worry about that later. Now the amount this comes out in relation to the sill, I pretty much did a calculated guess of it. I can't really be sure until I figure out exactly where the other sill is supposed to be so I have places to measure it from. So that may need to be adjusted later. That's not really a problem. What I'm going to do now is take this apart and duplicate all these posts and put them on the other sill in dimensionally the same place and start building up the other side. And here's the other side. Well, most of it anyway. Now, obviously this piece up top is a temporary. I wanted it to be one piece all the way over to where the door is, because that's going to be easier to get measurements from. The post that goes here that holds the door, I'm not even going to think about that until I get the door finished and ready to install. Now, these posts, on the outside, they're cut pretty much where they should be. The inside, especially this rear one, I left it alone because the front seat back attaches here and it's cut in a straight line to the bottom of the seat back and then it curves in. And exactly where that starts and how far the angle is supposed to be, I won't know that till I get the rest of the body together, so I'm just waiting on that. The other post I kind of cut to size, but left it kind of big so I can trim it down if I need to. So now the next thing to do is take this side, the other side, and the back of the body that I already made, and put them all together on the chassis and start measuring them against each other. So up to now I've been mocking up the body structure on the chassis and I've been doing it over here just because this is where I last parked the car. And now we're going to start putting the stuff together for real and taking measurements so this thing needs to be parked on level ground. So my plan is to move it uphill over to the slab. Problem is I didn't think about that before I took it apart so I can't drive it. But there are other ways to move it. And now I have both sides and the back of the body sort of clamped together with a bunch of temporary braces to hold it steady. I discovered this piece up top on the left side. I didn't put enough curve in it, so I'm going to have to make a new one. But it's not much loss because I can trim down the rest of it and use it on the other side. The angle of the posts I actually got pretty close. I didn't need to move them all that much, so that's good. And now that everything looks dimensionally pretty good, I'm going to take everything back off the sills, trim them down to their proper height. I'll cut the grooves in for the floorboards, and then coat them in primer. All right, we got the sills back on. We're ready to start attaching things permanently to them. Now these body brackets are just homemade temporaries. I didn't buy the proper ones, reason being I'm not sure if I'm going to use them or come up with my own design, but for the time being that'll keep progress moving. Now originally these sills only had one cross member and it was all the way in the back. The only thing that held them together up here was the seat frame, which surprisingly worked pretty well. But still, it's going to be the beginning of my own modified designs here. I'm going to make an additional cross member to go behind the seat frame out of this scrap piece of angle. I'm just going to weld 
flanges to it on each side so it bolts in. And that will hold the sills together. It'll keep them upright and keep the distance between them just right where they should be. So, I'll go to work on that. And there it is. Now, I did have to notch quite a bit out of it to clear the fuel tank. So it's not quite as strong as it was, but it'll still work. And it is quite a bit lighter now because of that. Alright, it's all back together. I've got the posts back on. And while I was putting it together, I discovered something. The frame I'm working on is actually twisted a little bit. So I had to put a bunch of shims on the right front corner. I had to remove the fuel tank to measure it. But anyway, that's fixed. So next thing I'm going to do is work on the seed riser. And the, the brace that I made here is just held in with drywall screws right now because it's just temporary. But I'm going to relocate it to where it's just behind the seed riser and then probably weld them together. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to take it back off and weld it some more later. And now I'm going to take the rear posts off and now that I know where the seat frame is going to go, I'm going to trim the posts down to their proper thickness. Well, we made quite a bit of progress on this thing. Now, I'm going to end the video here, reason being, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do next. Now, logically, the next thing to do would be to make the seat frame. Now, I can't get the dimensions on that until I have the front seat back panel or the backrest finished, which I have an original that I'm going to use as a pattern to make a new one, but I still need to do it. Now, originally in 1913, the seat frames were made entirely of wood. Now, steel parts were phased in it later on, and during 1915, arguably the beginning of the 1916 model year, the seat frames were made entirely of steel. And I've been thinking of copying the steel seat frame design for this, reason being it'd probably be cheaper and easier for me to make that. Also, they take up less space, so there's more room to get to the inside of the body. And once you put the seat on, you can't tell the difference anyway. So, something I need to think about. Also, before the backrest can go on, both side panels need to be installed for good. So, I need to make the left front panel pretty soon. Another thing I can do is make the frame for the right front door and the post and get that installed and hinged and make a latch for it. So I need to make some decisions and when I do I'll start making the next video. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.